Okay. What's up? What's up? What's up, man? Welcome to the Two Cents Podcast. Um, I'm John Hope. I am here with my lovely guest, uh, Jess. What's up, Jess? Hello. How you doing? I'm doing good. Word, word, word. Um, I'm excited that you're here. This is uh, kind of the first episode since kind of the 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 COVID. Okay. Uh, I kind of we kind of stopped for a little bit. Um, so I'm excited to kick things off, you know, and uh, get back into talking about this hip hop. You know what I mean? Um, how are you? How's your family? You know, with the COVID and quarantine and all that good stuff. I've been okay. I mean, COVID's been like up and down. I work in the hospital, so. Oh, wow. It's, it's What's different. that like? It's cr- the first, the first month of COVID was kind of crazy because nobody knew what it was. Mm-hmm. And it, to me, it didn't really have good direction as a whole. Oh, of course. <laughs> but, so it's kind of just like, all right, like, what am I doing? Am I safe? Like, wearing a PPE for the first time was very scary. Yeah, yeah. Um, but besides that, I think COVID has been a blessing in disguise for me. Oh, right. Um, only because I feel like I got more into my mental health, um, also my creative side. Yeah. And um, just knowing what I really want in life, it slowed me down. Yeah, and it sounds like it sounds like it slowed you down um, with, within good reason, right? Like like the time to reflect, um, the time to kind of just do that inventory and figure out like, oh, okay, what's working for me? What don't I want yeah. in life? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, the opportunity to learn like new things and pivot you know, maybe the way, you know, we were moving in one direction just didn't really work. And now you kind of switch, you know, because um, I share that same sentiment, man. I, I, I feel like, you know, barring the, the, the health risks and things of that nature that come with, uh, you know, this, this pandemic, um, it's, it's been my probably well, my most successful year you know, at, in my career ever, like I'm, I'm up, you know what I mean? Okay. Like I'm up and, um, and I, and I can only imagine if, if I'm up with these blessings under a pandemic, when everything really, you know, opens back up and, and, you know, I feel like, you know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be even more in a better place. Do you place. think, do you think things will open back up or do you think we'll just have a new normal? Because everybody's saying when everything opens back up, and I'm just like, eh. So I'm, I I'm I, let me be specific. I, I think that's a good question, but specifically, I'm talking about being able to tour. Okay. So so I'm looking through that lens. I'm like, I right, if I'm, you know, I kind of, I had to pivot, you know, um, uh, shout out, you know, I'm rocking the Hope Signature Collection, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, and so I, I started, you know, transitioning into, you know, developing my company, my lifestyle brand and whatnot. But really, I love to perform. You know, I was actually in the middle of tour um, right when the, the, the thing hit, the COVID hit. So um, so that's what I mean, being able to get back on stage and, and, and perform, because that's really, you know, my strong suit. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to that, you know. But yeah, I agree. I don't really know what normal is going to look like you know, moving forward, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, all right, so, yo, Two Cents Podcast, man, you know, what we do is just kind of speak on some topics and, you know, take a, use them as a deeper dive to talk about certain things, you know what I'm saying? Um, I guess, you know, I, I want to, I want to kick things off with, um, with Meg, the staff. Mm-hmm. Megan Meg. Oh, yes, I love Meg. Yeah, I fuck with Meg too, man. And I don't know if you saw, but you know, um, she recently released the photo of her yeah. foot, right? Oh. And um basically for those that don't know, um, she was shot 
um, allegedly by Tory Lanez at a party with Kylie Jenner. Um, and the response was definitely, um, was definitely underwhelming because a lot of people made jokes. A lot yeah. of people, you know, really, really didn't take it as serious as it should be. Um, and a lot of high profile people. And then um, fast forward, she released a photo basically explaining like, yo, this was a real situation. Like this mm -hmm. is, this was, you know, and kind of, you know, condemning and speaking to the people who were making jokes about it. And so I feel like, you know, and, and you hear about this stuff in the culture, like, like real prevalent, this whole notion of, you know, protect black women yeah. and, and, and whatnot. But it just seems like we as a culture just aren't, we say it, but we ain't really doing it. You know what I'm saying? And well, like, it's corny well, that she has to put out a, a fucking photo uh, to, to validate, it, you know, what's, what exactly is going on. I mean, how do you feel about that? Um, I think when you say culture, I think it's, I don't want to sound like, sound like a, a no. man hater, <laughs> but I think it's black men. I mean, it's Twitter, so of course people's going to get that laughs in, mm -hmm. but it's like, why does a black woman have to show a picture for people to even believe her? Why don't you just believe a black woman on right. the top? Yeah. And it's been like traumatic, like getting shot. Like people's like, oh well, why did she get shot? What do you mean, why? Did <laughs> why she, she get shot? shot? <laughs> like, she got shot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's like, crazy. I don't it's crazy. get. I don't get it. Even with the whole Trey Song and Kiki Palmer thing, mm. when people didn't um, believe Kiki Palmer about allegedly getting sexually harassed, I'm like, why would she lie? She's kind of yeah. on the same platform as Trey Song. Right, so it's not a come up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for me, it's like, I just don't understand why people just don't believe black women, like, at all. Yo, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know either. I would like to guess that it's one of those things where, you know, black women are seen as strong. And I think that in itself is is problematic in so many different ways, you know what I'm saying? And and then there's also this notion of like, um, this it's weird because it's they're seen as strong, but then obviously not valued in a way. Because like, yo, truth be told, if 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 there were white women talking about R. Kelly, that nigga would have been arrested a long time ago. And, and you know he, I, I, I really think a big part of the reason why it's twofold. The reason why he was so successful in kind of masking everything that was going on was because one, he made undeniably good music for a long amount of time, mm -hmm. and then also the victims were black young black girls, yeah. and, and and nobody believes young black girls. But I think if if he was doing what he was doing to. Uh, you know, young, young white, white women. It, it would have been, it would have been open shut. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, or at least the road to, to stardom would, would have been a much more difficult. And I think like, that's kind of the same case here with Trey songs, with the Megan Thee Stallion thing. And we're talking about women who have social status. Yeah. You know and like, these aren't, these aren't like regular, girls you know who kind of you know just you know work your, your 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 normal life and you know these are these are women who have fortitude resources stardom all that yet and still whether it's megan or whether it's you know someone that's you know just living their daily lives they're still but, faced with the same battle but just because megan has just because megan is a rapper doesn't necessarily mean that she's not normal to certain guys but certain guys don't even like female rappers. Right. So it could just be a regular black woman to them. Crazy. How, when do you, do you, are you optimistic as a, as a black woman um, that, that, that the, 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 the temperature could change, the climate could change like positively towards how we view black women? Um, I mean, I think, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, because I think that I was telling my, OK, 
Okay, I was telling my friend that I feel like some, I'm just gonna say some. Yeah. Black men remind me of white women because I feel like you guys have a privilege and you see it. Of course. So I feel like, and I see on Twitter, I feel like a lot of black women try to educate black men mm -hmm. about our issues and they make fun of it, they make jokes, or they, they understand, but they don't really care. So yeah. I just feel like as a whole for you guys, it just, it would take you guys to really open up and see and say, okay, I get it. Until then, it's, it's not going nowhere. Right. It's gonna stay the same. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> And, and which, which, and, and you see it kind of manifest. And I wanted to get your take on this, right? Like, so shout out my boy Nas. Nas is about to drop, right? Nas is about to mm -hmm. drop tomorrow, tonight rather. Um, his 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 album King's Disease, and he dropped a record called Ultra Black, you know, and uh, which which I like, um, but it caused a little bit of controversy because in the record he took a shot at Doja Cat. Um, I didn't listen to that song. What? What is he saying? <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, 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 all right, so the li the line was um, um, so the the just to give you some context, the song is like a pro black kind of timely record that that's going on with you know with everything that the the social unrest. So he's saying you know we're going ultra black, everything's black, and it's and it's a dope song from a Sonic's perspective. You know what I'm saying? The lyrics are dope. Um, I don't know. I, it, it depends on how you define shot, but the line was, um, um, we going ultra black, unapologetically black, the opposite of Doja Cat. Um, and, mm. and, and, and it, it, it could be an entendre where, I don't know, and, and like of, you know, saying that she's light skinned and we're, you know, we're going black, blacker or whatever, but I think- But she's still a black woman, even though she, she's light -skinned. Right. Then there's also the other layer of Doja Cat and her, prof you know, the, the, the chat rooms that she was in with yeah. men and all that. So I think it was more on, along those lines. And so Nas got a lot of backlash because people were saying, well, you know, how, how, how come you ain't come for Kanye? How come you ain't come for Terry? Yeah. You know, how come, if you're talking about being black, why won't you uplift black woman why you have to pick a dig a dick even though like Doja Cat what she did was <laughs> yeah was wrong but right. why do you have to where's the unit the um where where are we sticking together in all of this right right, right you know right. you have uh two baby mamas that's black right right Facts. so what does that say to your daughter as right. well and she's old enough to understand all of this yeah 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 so i mean i mean it, it sounds like it's just like no no matter who or what within the culture just black just male patriarchy is just where it's just dominant and that's where the privilege comes in right right yeah because you know i mean um uh, i think it was a few months ago um there was a there was a movie a documentary that came out that was really dope called On the Record, and it was uh, it was made uh, it was put out on HBO. Oprah Winfrey was supposed to get behind it, um, but she dropped out. It was a documentary basically highlighting Russell Simmons and his sexual, you know, violation allegations. You know what I'm saying? Oh and wow! The music industry, yeah. I mean. According to, to to the documentary, I mean, he he was a tyrant. He was he was on some other shit, and but the 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 the, the documentary essentially went unnoticed. It didn't get picked up. It went. It was on HBO, but it was like it wasn't on. It wasn't on the uh, the, the 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 mainstream, the marquee uh, platform. Like you had to go searching and, mm -hmm. and type in a secret code and all that. Like it was like buried. And it didn't really get a lot of um, attention. Yeah. yeah, and so and and then Russell Simmons ends up interviewing on on the Breakfast Club, and basically gaslighting and 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 you know um, 
you know, saying that, you know, denying everything that's going on and the women didn't really get a chance to retort. Mm. And in fact, when Russell Simmons was on, all three of the Breakfast, Breakfast Club members were on, interviewed him. So Angela Yee, Charlemagne, Envy, one of them ended up getting an interview, one of the accusers, but only Angela Yee was the one that was interviewing. So Charlemagne and DJ Envy weren't present. And I thought that was telling, you know what I'm saying? But was she, but was the interview, was the person comfortable to be around Charlemagne and DJ Envy? That's a good question. See, I mean, I didn't even think about that as a man. So yeah, that makes a lot of, I, I could see that. I could, I, could, I could see how that could be uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Because if, if I was in that situation and I'm just a regular girl and Russell Simmons has this big name and you guys don't believe me, of course I'm going to tell my truth to a woman, mm. especially a, a woman of color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, 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 makes, that makes 100% sense. Um, and shower men just be joking too sometimes, so... Yeah, I'm not really the biggest fan of Charlemagne. I feel like I've seen one too many times where he doesn't uh, validate black women. Um, he's, you know, the case in point with Monique and her beef with Netflix in mm. terms of the pay. I felt like he was challenging her and like really kind of giving her a hard time. Um, I saw another situation with um, what's old girl from. Uh, from VH1, the dark skin uh, Latina with the Afro. The, oh, uh, oh my gosh. And, and Meg, uh, you know what I'm talking and, about? She's beautiful. Yeah. Um, so she was on there and she was talking about her experience with colorism and basically Charlemagne was shitting on it. You know what I'm saying? And it just seems like he has like this history of like really not treating or treating a certain type of black women, um, you know, a particular way and, 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 and not, you know what I'm saying? But that comes with self-help, self-hate. Cause a lot of black men, they don't really talk about colorism in the black male world. Oh, talk to me about that. So, uh, yes, I, feel like when we talk about, <laughs> I feel like when we talk about colorism, we always talk about women. Mm. So light skin versus dark skin women. Right. But we never really talk about the men's point of view. Like I remember this boy named BJ, he wrote um an article, I think it was on Sorry for the Blog, and it was talking about how he likes his dark he finally loved his dark skin. Yeah. And I think he has a book as well. Yeah. Um I think back in the day, like middle school, you know, the light skin with nice eyes, every girl wanted like those type of guys. Right. And the dark skin guys were like, mm, he's too dark, you know, the whole African booty scratcher thing. I and now you. coming up, it's like everybody loves dark skin guys. Yes. Everybody. Everybody, like, everybody yeah. Everybody wants a dark skin guy. But mm -hmm. I don't see dark skin males talking about how they felt in the past about being called black, mm -hmm. being called African booty scratcher, mm -hmm. not really like loving their skin mm -hmm. as I do see with black women. And I wonder why, like, why don't you guys talk about that? Because before, I, I'm not gonna lie, I used to think certain girls would go for black guys because it's a trend. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean they objectify, you know what I'm saying, and, and whatnot. You know, I don't know. I, I don't I don't know. I know I had my experience, you know what I mean? Um, um I remember going to school, uh, being in middle school and I, yeah, I definitely wasn't comfortable with my skin. I wasn't comfortable with being African, you know what I mean? Like like I remember I would lie about my um my middle name. My middle mm -hmm. name is 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 African, and I would I would straight up tell people my my middle name is Michael. You know what I mean? Like so so that self hate definitely was pervasive. Um, so I don't know, I don't know why it's like that. I think that 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 makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? Like why it's only reduced to 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 black women. Um, maybe the more we have those types of conversations, we can peel back that self-hate, which would allow us to, 
you know, really appreciate our black women in, in, in those spaces. Cause you know, yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. And, and the thing is it, the way, the way it's sort of viewed, it's like that, that, that self love for, for many in that, in the community, it, it looks like it's like this overbearing, like, Oh, you want some, you want some Malcolm X woke shit. <laughs> You know, you on your yeah. Erica Badu, and it's like nah, yeah, it don't I even have to be that. Please stop calling me Queen all the time. I, right, I yo, I tell well, me about that. Like, so because I feel like that word has been so fucking bastardized, like, like, like Queen, and it has like a certain respectability politics to it that's like corny. Talk to me about that. I don't know. For me, I can only talk about my experience. I feel like I'm always being called queen when I wear, like, my natural hair. Oh, right. Like, right. I wear, like, you know, I, I um, switch my styles up. Oh, so yeah. when I have, like, my protected hairstyles, which is braids, locks, locks, full locks, or, like, my natural hair, I get queen, I get called queen more. Like, oh, you're such a newbie and queen, or oh, <laughs> then all of this. But then when I'm wearing my blonde wigs and I'm, you know, all of that, I, I'm not getting called queen. Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. I, oh, so I'm just like, yo, stop queening me to death because I'm not what you think I am. Yeah, right, 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 <laughs> right. So, like, what, what, when you, when you hear that, how, it, obviously it's loaded, but, like, what, what comes in that, that you sort of are not, feeling like when someone says queen when someone's queening you to death i feel like when uh, to me when a guy says queen yeah it's just like you only think about like a strong black woman if she has like natural hair mm -hmm. with her hair that's yeah. to me how i'm feeling because like again when i wear my wig i don't really get called that Right, so but you're like, the same person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same person. For me, I wear, I change my hairstyle because it's just a part of me. Of course. It's me t expressing myself. Right. And for me, I just notice with hairstyles, I get different type of guys too. So. Really? Yeah, I feel oh, like. Oh, <laughs> talk to me about this. Hold up, talk to me. What's that I feel like? like when I wear different type of hairstyles, I get more, like when I wear my natural hairstyle, I get more of like the Afro King <laughs> type guy. No, I'm serious. And when I wear my wig, I get more of like the, I don't know, like the, <laughs> I won't say basketball type, but like those smooth caps, you can say. That's just to me how I feel. Like an athlete type motherfucker, like yeah, that's like, yeah. Right, 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 right. Maybe six two, slim kind of fit, whatever. Yeah, it's, it's and then cute. no matter what, you're gonna get Jessica. You're gonna get that Zen calm girl that's always talking about black love, like the yeah. wig or the fro. So I just don't know why when guys see hair, it's like oh, because she's natural, she's just this. Newbie and cream. No, right, I can talk right. about the city girls if I'm natural. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I I don't get it. Yo, that's so 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 ill because like, it just goes to show like the way we. Oh man, I don't want to get too deep, but like, yo, like white supremacy culture is real, yo. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, it's so fucking ingratiated and embedded in our shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm guilty too. And I'm, I'm not, I'm, sta I'm standing, I'm in the mud. So, so I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, holy of the Tao. I'm saying like that, that's the crazy thing about it is like white supremacy culture. It, it, you, you can be black or brown and participate in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, it's not like just, you know, isolated towards white folks being oppressive. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy. Like, like, I could so see, like you, if you you know wore your fro or curls or something like that, like you getting some like almond juice drinking. Yeah, call me shea butter, like damn. <laughs> <what's that? laughs> and yo, you know what's crazy is that you. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not gonna pass no judgment, but like 
you probably ain't even on that time. Like, and not, not in a bad way, but I'm just saying, like, you don't, you, you don't need to be, you're, you don't strike me as someone who wants to be boxed in, like. No, as, I don't like being boxed in at all. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like you, we, and I think that's the thing. I, 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 on my end, I feel like one of the reasons why, I, so I used to work in, in um, higher ed for a long okay. time right like like for a long time and i left higher ed um like 2018 um because i felt like i was being boxed in and it was the the you know the code switching and all that shit but more or less like um i didn't want to be like boxed into this like academic dr mark lamont hill type you know what i'm saying the token black guy yeah but Mm -hmm. also like like i like gucci main you know what i'm saying (laughs) like like real shit like i like i don't want to be you know talib quali you know just i can have those conversations you know what i'm saying i want the advancement for my people but like I'm also hood and ratchet like like you know what i mean like i i want to be able to play in those spaces without having to be, so I don't really, so when I tell people, oh yeah, I, I, I have a master's degree or like, you know, I, I'm this or whatever. And then I get a certain type of response or people think they have to have a certain type of conversation with me mm-hmm. and it just gets all different. And I'm like, nigga, nah, I just want to, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> just, I want to get some wings and some Chico sticks, nigga, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and it's just so crazy how, that stuff like is so pervasive man like i i, I yo i wonder if like we could do like a like a research or something like 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 a like a one day like you go out on like i don't know i i, I don't know that i don't know how i'm thinking it through but it'll be dope to see the response based upon how we dress and wear our hair and things of that nature you know what i mean but it's corny it's really it is it's corny. It's funny. And even like when you talk about um, white supremacy, um, even wearing your hair at work, like yeah. I just got um, hired to be a vet coordinator by um, this lady called Pro. Yeah. Um, and I was asking her, how should I wear my hair? And she's like, to be honest, just wear, wear it naturally, wear whatever you want to wear. Yeah. And it's like, why do I always think like that? Right. Like what? Should I wear my natural hair when I go to work? Yeah. Can I wear my fro? When I do wear my fro to go to work, it's just like, oh my gosh, your hair. Or when I wear my where I wear when I wear straight, oh sorry, when I wear straight hair, it's like, I don't know. It's just like why sometimes I ask myself, why do I think like this to just be to fit in right. in a world that doesn't really even accept me? That's crazy. That's a that's a whole we go on for hours with that, you know what I mean? I I, I feel like um you know those 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 thoughts um it it, it it it's like you you shouldn't even have to ask those questions or do mm-hmm. right like like that's before you even day one. Mm-hmm. That's before day one, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, you you know, you want to come into each space. You would like to think that you can come into each space your one hundred percent full authentic self. But but you, like you really can't, you know. Or, or I mean, you, you can. You can, but but there'll be there there'll be there'll be responses and ramifications to it. That's true. And you have to discern what you want to ex you know what you're willing to take on and what you're not willing to take on you know what i mean um and, and and that's whack you know what i'm saying but you know i see to your point about um how people are perceived and how you're perceived i see the same thing with like meg megan or cardi versus mm. like a rhapsody or like a Lauren Hill, like Rhapsody and Lauren Hill get queen to death. You know what I'm saying? And, and they talk about the same thing. 
real shit. Yo, so same thing about Megan. Miss, like, go like, ahead. Um, I re- seen something on Twitter which I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so true. They're talking about how Jen, Jenna Onito and Megan and Cardi they talk about the same thing. The same shit. But just because Janae's more like zen out, you right. know. And Megan's more like ratchet with it. Janae's talking about her pussy. She's calling her, her pussy pussy fairy. She pussy has fairy. a song. Pussy the pussy fairy. fairy. Yeah. <laughs> like, and nobody Crazy. says anything about that. She says pussy fairies on the way. But then when Megan wants to be like, wants to say something about her vagina, it's a big issue. Right. Which I don't understand. And then to me, it's like, all right, who are you guys having sex with? Right. You know <laughs> like, who are you having sex with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think a lot of it is um I read something where um there was a I forgot what I, I forgot what the way he said it, but it was like basically men are upset with the liberation of of women and their sexual agency because yeah. they can't they no longer have control. I see that. You know what I'm saying? They no longer can police women and they no longer, and that in itself is sort of like a trigger. You know what I mean? And I, I, I think I kind of, I kind of subscribe to that. Like, you know, like I, I, and I'm just like, yo, man, yo, my mom sat me down. I'll never forget. It was like a couple Christmases ago. My mom sat me down and said, listen, I'm going to tell you how, how you came here. Like you, <laughs> you, you a love child. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like my mom just straight up was like, yeah, yeah, you know, you wasn't, <laughs> this wow. wasn't it. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I guess my point is, is, is that how you think niggas got here? Like, 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 yeah. like, like, you know, the way, the way we police Meg and Cardi and the whole WAP shit, it's like, it's like, well, like you said, like, how do you, like, are you having sex? How do you think, like, you, you, you like, we, we need to remove the taboo off the shit. Like, you know what I mean? I think that sometimes, like I said, some, because I don't want to say all oh, men, don't think that women enjoy sex. Exactly. Oh, hold on one second. Mm-hmm. Yes? Yeah, how you doing? It's high, it's housekeeping, housekeeping. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think that some men don't think that women enjoy sex, or it's like just for their pleasure for some reason. Uh-huh. Because for me, it's like I just don't understand how you can criticize these women talking about their vaginas or how they want to be treated sexually. But then you're having sex with a woman that enjoys their music. Right. Wow. Because like if you're talking about Megan the Sign Kind, if you're talking about that song in general, like I was raised by Little Kim and Trina. And they were talking <laughs> so Reckless. Reckless. <laughs> yeah. So if you can't if you're feeling some type of way about that. What else you feel some type of way about? And it's like, why? Because you're having sex with women. Right, right. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think, I think, I, like it's. I think it's just male ego that's being bruised. That's oh, also, community. one thing I want to ask too, because yes. um, I noticed too when a, a lot of guys they will say, "I don't want daughters," or oh, "I don't want a girl" because of this. Yeah. And I'm like, what? You don't want a girl because she likes sex. You know your daughter's gonna have sex one day. Right, right, right. Yeah, I don't I don't understand it. I don't even make those equations. Like, um, I don't I don't I don't know. I feel like, you know, um it, it, I I think about that TI situation, right? Like the whole with his daughter. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like, yo, what do you that in, that in itself is traumatizing, right? So if you're trying to be so protective of whatever, mm-hmm. because it, it, it's it's rooted in this, like, you know, you, you don't want your daughter to be, you know, sexually 
traumatized or victimized or whatever, whatever you, de- however you define that. But it's like the that in which Ti is doing that to me is a traumatic thing, right? Like I, yeah. what she, what he did, put his daughter on blast in mm-hmm. front of the world, knowing that he has the voice that he has and and the the influence and you know, like essentially almost like double down. Like, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like to me, that's traumatic. And I, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's, it's really, it all goes back to the male ego. I think it's a bruise to the male ego because we no longer have the power or the agency over women's bodies the way that. You we, do. We, we but you do have some guys that get it. That's like, yeah, I'm all about it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah. And for me, it's just that I think it just depends on the person. Because I do see some guys that's just like I don't really care. Like, right. I like, it. and yeah. I do see some guys that are just like, well, she shouldn't be talking about that. As a guy who has a daughter, like, I mean, I think it's all about context. So mm. I think, like, you know, I know, I know for a fact my daughter is going to be listening to hip hop. I, 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 you know, like that's, am, am, am I going to censor? I, 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 yes, depending, you know, at, but when she gets of age where she starts, you know, um, really kind of finding her space and how, finding what she likes to listen to, I'm going to listen with her and like have those conversations about, yo, wh- you know, where these songs are, kind of coming from pops the topics and whatnot because you're right like man snoop shit back in the day like bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks um you know two live crew uh Mm -hmm. uh too short even Uh, the tip drill video tip drill right (laughs) that was that was like last week in in the context of time lad like he said he slid a whole motherfucking time yeah yeah and we all like I remember BET Uncut. I used to watch that, like you know what I mean. And, and oh yeah, no, my mom was just like, yeah, no, I had to sneak and be like, what is this about? Right, right, <laughs> I, man. Listen, but I feel like I think like it, it just comes down to parenting and like being able to really contextualize because now more than ever, you, you can't stop it. The, the kids are going yeah. to get that information. No matter what. No matter what. So you just have to accept that. Mm -hmm. And I think for someone like T.I. to say what he said was a little bit like, it was ignorant. Like, it was like, it's like, bro. It was insensitive to his daughter. And she's young Young. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wild, man. That's wild. It's that control thing. Like, for me, I was born in a religious home. Okay. I'm Haitian. So I was born in a church. Yeah. And... For me, I'm spiritual. I'm not religious. So I have a connection, a spiritual connection with God. Mm -hmm. And like in a church, just keep on saying like, don't have sex um, before you're married. But they never educate you until I went to Youth in Action. Shout out to everybody that went to Youth in Action. Shout out Youth in Action. (laughs) What's up? (laughs) Until I went there and I learned about sex by um, the year team. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm 31. It took me until I was really 29 to really control my, to be proud of who I am as a woman yeah. and to really control myself being sexual, a sexual being. Yeah. Like I didn't like sex at all in my 20s because mm. in my mind, sex was bad. If I had sex, I was like a prostitute. Wow. To God. Because that's what the church basically said. Got you. Okay, I see where you're going. But it wasn't until I really got to learn more about sex, um, more about my own body. I have a self-love blog called Beautiful Soul. Okay. And um, a lot of girls, not a lot, but certain girls, they write about their self-love journey. Um, Whether it's like natural hair. Um, Onika, she wrote about how being fashion and being plus size helped her with her confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, Kexi, she's from Providence. She goes by Kek, um, Coco Kek on Instagram. She talks about um, her sexual confidence, not only with sex, but her whole body. Mm-hmm. And like you was going back saying T.I. 
it's kind of like controlling yeah. his daughter. I feel like society, whether it's men, whether it's your own parents, whether it comes from the church, they try to control yeah. what you think until you reach that certain age where you're just like, no, like I'm my own person. Right, right. You know? Right. If I'm a Christian and let's say I'm a Christian and I do want to wait to have sex, that's okay. Mm-hmm. There's Christian women that are married that have sex all the time and they listen to WAP and they're like, okay, I get it. You right. know? Right. I don't know why why yeah, that's why it why do you think that is? Like why is the again it goes back to like it's like how do you think we got here? Like why is sex such a taboo thing? in church in society like why is why is it why i don't understand like it should it's natural it, it's 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 natural as i yeah. think with sex you can control people yeah. as well so mm-hmm. i think that's what it is gotcha. gotcha it's just a control it's a control point. it's just control man well i mean listen you know um <laughs> I got, I got my, you know, (laughs) these conversations and more are helping me inform the best way to raise my daughter, you know what I mean? And and how I want to, you know, um, your daughter's adorable, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. Shout out to Hope. Um, yeah, just trying to, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a first time father, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to figure out what the best route is, but definitely want to, give her the space to develop and grow mm-hmm. on her own. You know what I mean? Like that controlling, cause it comes back it, to haunt you, you know, like, like as a parent, like, you know what I mean? In ways that I don't think you really are prepared for when you try to be so, you know, rule with an iron fist and like, you know, really like uh, be overbearing to the point where the per you know, the child can't even be his or herself, you know? So as a um, a black male, yeah, what do you? How do you feel about the whole mega situation, and also just black women as a whole? Yo, so I think the Megan situation um, is really unfortunate, right? Like I think it, it's, and it goes to. I mean, this is somebody who was like literally shot. Like she could have died. Mm. like you know whether you say oh she got shot in the foot or whatever like she could have died and 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 the i was just i was definitely taken back by the jokes like the way it was like lightly you know especially considering what um what's been going on in the in the country i would think we would be hypersensitive and a little bit more over compensating you know what i mean to, to to her situation, but it was like the complete opposite. You know what I'm saying? You know, I saw Joe Buttons. I saw, you know, a, a lot of like, you know, some of our prominent male. In, in 50 the, Cent. What's that? The 50 Cent. 50 Cent, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like make make fun, you know, and you're just like, man, where's this coming from? Um, I think you're right. It, it There is a self-hate, you know, because like the way we be caping for other people, other women. I don't, I don't see that energy, you know, and, and specifically, I mean, personally, um, I'm definitely, you know, one of the things we talked about at the top of the hour was about that personal reflection. And like, I'm, oh, I'm like, I've been really like trying to figure out where I play, where my role is and where, where I am on this like spectrum of like how to be better towards black women, you know what I mean? Um, you know, um, I'm I'm not perfect, but you know, I'm definitely not where they're at. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I mean, I think there's there's the culture sometimes just we have norms that already we oppress, you know what I'm saying, our black women. So like, you know, I'm just trying to be better. Just trying I think I think when I see situations like what's happening with Meg um, I like the way that she's handling it in terms of, you know, she's saving face. But I'm sure, you know, I think she said in the post that she has her days and has her nights, you know. I can't mm-hmm. I can't imagine how 
someone like her who's been like the the number one uh kind of face right now like she mm-hmm. you know, she's, she's really out there and to see the culture sort of quote unquote turn their back you know what i mean on like, her on her that, that that could be that could be traumatizing that could be devastating and, and know? people forget that she's young she's like only 25 right yeah yeah, oh, I think she was, that. yeah, I think she yeah. might be like 24 or something like mm-hmm. that, yeah. And when she was explaining her backstory about how, like, her mother passed away, she, her yeah. mother and her father passed away, but she was just really explaining herself. People were still not being, still didn't care. Yeah. And I'm like, this girl's explaining herself and yeah. saying, you know, she hasn't dealt with her mom's death she really doesn't have a lot of people around her that she thought had her back and you're still being insensitive to her getting shot. Yeah, yeah. Like shot, yo. Like not, not that, not, well, stab, <laughs> stab, but not, not, but literally somebody took a gun out and shot her. Shot. It doesn't matter why. It doesn't matter, oh, I need to know the backstory. No, she's a woman that got shot. Got shot. And this is under, mm-hmm. like, this is, on the backdrop of Breonna Taylor. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that's the shit that's crazy. Like, I'm like, yo, mm-hmm. I don't really understand. Like, 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 this is literally on the backdrop of yep. Breonna Taylor, Sandra Bland. Like, like, what, what are you like? Like, I don't And that's know. why I say, like, I don't know how it feels to be a black man. I will never know, I don't know. But I want some black guys to know that you guys have a privilege. Yeah, yeah. That you guys probably don't see or you do see. Real that shit. us black women, especially being a woman and black, that we don't have. Mm-hmm. And like you said, Brianna Taylor, they still, still people are still, like, I feel like people are playing with her death now. All the memes oh, and all of yeah. that. It's like, oh, yeah, the sandwich is good, but um, arrest the cops that killed Brianna Taylor. What? What, yeah, it's not, not cool. a joking matter. Yeah, yeah. It's not cool. It's not cool. It's, it really isn't cool, which, which, like, really, it's disturbing because it just goes to show, like, you know, how, how people can treat you when you're not here. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it's like, that, it's, it's just not... It's like, yo, how do you do that? Like, how can you, like, she's literally gone and you making memes, yep. you know, and hats and and apparel. Like, I know, like, I saw LeBron James um, the other night, you know, for game one of the playoffs, he wore basically a MAGA parody hat that said, make America arrest the cops that killed, you know, uh, Breonna Taylor. And I appreciate the, the, I understand the sentiment, but it, it was just, to me, it was kind of like, man. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, first off, I don't, I'm, I'm done with like MAGA parody hats. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I, to me, I thought, I think that shit is corny. But then like the whole, the whole Brianna Taylor insertion, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't sit well. It doesn't sit Oh, well. people even making a profit over it, like making shirts. <laughs> yeah. all of that. What's the point of that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but it's it's not cool. And that's why I kind of stopped with the Black Lives Matter a little bit movement, because I yeah. feel like, what am I fighting for? Because what happened to um Toyo? Yeah, that one hurt. This, Toyin. This, Toyin. Yeah. Yes. The yeah. same men that she was protected. Sorry, I get I always get emotional with this. No, 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 no. The same men that she was protected killed her. And it made me realize like why am I going so hard yeah. for these pe- people? And then I even going hard for black women. Like right. it really makes me sad. Like when I seen that, I was just like, wow, like she was really going hot as a young woman. 19. For these men. Yeah. And no one even said anything. I didn't go to her um, memorial on um, Dexter. Yeah. I went the day after. Yeah. But Me even too. hearing the tweets about how it was a bunch of, you know, um, women of color coming together. 
and there wasn't enough black men there. Yeah. And I'm like, you guys want us to protect you guys. There's some some people tweet like, oh, black women are so strong. It's like, no, we're not. I, I don't want to be that black, that yeah. black strong woman anymore. <laughs> right. Because look, look what it's doing to us. Yeah, yeah, real shit. It's not doing anything. Yeah. And I, for me, I just stopped trying to educate people. I'm like, you're going to see when you want to see. I'm not going to be the black woman that's going to try to give you a speech anymore. I'm just not. I don't right. waste my time with it anymore. Yeah, it gets exhausting. It gets exhausting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, that, 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 yeah. I don't know. So, so how do you, so, so where's your relationship with Black Lives Matter now? I mean, it's still a rest of cops that, that carry yeah. me on the table, but I, I'm just iffy about it now. Like, yep. as a person and a sensitive person, I don't want to see anybody killed for, for the color of their skin. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like, I don't know, to be honest. That's, I don't know about the movement anymore. Got you. Got you. That's how I, I feel. I just don't know about the movement. I think that's healthy. I think that's a you know, healthy concern. I mean, I think it's one of those things where I... You know, sometimes you got to, like, forge your own path. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> when you take on, like, these causes, they, they, they get so diluted. I think one of the, the, the good thing and the not-so-good thing about the, the movement is that there's no central direct leader. Mm -hmm. right? so the good That's thing very is true. That people can, you know, can own it or, 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 or partake in it in a way where there's – you know, not too many gatekeepers, but I think that the the same the same reason why that's a good thing is also why it's bad, because you have people that come in with, you know, not so pure intentions, and and it gets um, and then they kind of veer off, and and sort of manipulate the 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 purity of it, um, you know, and and then it becomes something else, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So like. I, I think the 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 core sentiment of like yes my black life matters yeah I'm all the way with it but I think um I think you know it it it, it, it yeah it's 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 something to kind of explore the way mm. the way it's like the way in which it's being like the, it's reflected towards black women, you know, and, and, and other and other marginalized groups within the, the, the movement, right? Mm -hmm. so black trans, black queer, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. so so because that that all that the dominant or commercialization of Black Lives Matter is only re reduced to black men. Right, black men being shot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I I, you know what I mean? And that's, and we need all black folk to be to to matter, not just. Mm -hmm. black, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. And that's why for me, I feel more comfortable with women, especially women of color, black women, um, women empowerment platforms. Like for me, um, me and Erin, we have. A woman empowerment platform in Rhode Island called Mafia Glow. Yeah. We did a self love um, part, self love day party last year. We did sip and chat. Um, we have some things coming up, like our website and other things. I'm more comfortable in spaces like that because I know how we all feel and we can talk about it genuinely. Yeah. And that's why I think that's why I want to get into stuff like that more, especially in Providence, because we don't have that. Gotcha. In Providence. Yeah, man. I mean, I think I think that that's the beauty of where we're at right now as creatives. You know, if there's a void, you know, we can fill it. And, and we don't need to wait anymore for gatekeepers to kind of, you know, say, give us the green light. You know what I mean? So, like, what you know, I think that's dope that, you know, what you're doing is is creating a space where those conversations and that can be had and 
it's a it's it's a it's a safe space, you know, for for people. Um, you know, I, I I'd like to think um, that through my content, through my music, through whatever it is I do, I try to be as inclusive as possible. You know, which is why I've been so fortunate to have you know a fan base that's real diverse. You know, it's it's black men, black women, you know, gay, white older, younger, you know what I'm saying? Um, because the message, you know, my campaign is affinity and it's just like, you know, it, it's it's the natural connection. You know, I'm not really speaking to like one specific person, you know what I mean? Um, I, I, you know, I, I just, I just wish that um, the culture would embrace that a little bit more because I think like we got these younger artists that are are coming up that could really benefit from a mindset that 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 makes them not afraid or not so combative when it comes to you know um, our women and you know people that don't look like them or whatnot. I mean, I, you know how many times I've been on World Star and I've seen clips of like you know black trans getting beat up. Wow. You know what I'm saying? By young kids and like, you know, there was one kid, I think, I can't remember, I think he like committed suicide like after he got jumped. He he was at a corner store. It was actually was a dude who was with his trans girlfriend. Wow. It was coming, it was in the hood, coming out of the corner store and they, so it kind of happened in like a two or three day span. So first time he comes out, with his uh, uh, partner and they're being made fun of and chastised, so they go home. I think a few days later, he's walking by himself and he got jumped. And when he got jumped afterwards, he, he committed suicide. Wow. Yeah. But I think this is why therapy is really needed in the black community, because a lot of this is like deep within ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of things have to deal with just how, like, there's daddy issues. I think there's mama issues. Mm. Heard you. Mm. Heard you. Yeah. I, I just think that I think we need to do better in a black community in understanding why we think the way we think. Well, I th again, I think, you know, I think it's a, I think it all goes back to white supremacy culture, man. Uh, I'm going to buck with you, man. Like, that's my thing, man. And I know, but I do think that we are at a point in our lives where, and I'm, I, I'm not like, a, I, I want to come off uh, Candace Owens or like, you know, conservative or whatever, but I uh -huh. do think that to a degree, we have enough sophistication, enough resources, enough sure. information and access where we can begin to start holding ourselves accountable, accountable. and not just solely rely on, yo, racism, the culture, mm -hmm. the white people doing this, white people doing that. You know what I'm saying? Um, do I, do I, I think fundamentally where I differ from like a, a Candace Owens or, or Larry Elder or whatever, you know, black conservatives, you know, I, I want to see the advancement of my people. Um, I do acknowledge systems because I believe like a lot of black contrarians and conservatives, they don't acknowledge systems like si that, that, like that shit is real, you know, mm -hmm. what I mean? but at the same time, I think now more than ever, we have enough information, you know, um, you know what I'm saying? I'm chopping it up with you via Zoom. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Technology, we're able to kick it right now. And, 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 and so I feel like we, we, we need to start turning the, 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 the needle where we can start holding ourselves accountable and begin to really like start doing some impactful shit. Mm -hmm. But I also think that some of the, we, we don't have enough resources. Cause I feel like everything is, like you said, it's within us, but like, we don't have enough black doctors in the 
urban community. So yeah. people can't even afford therapy at right. all. So yeah. it's like, once you figure that out and you're like, okay, I need to work on myself, but how? Could it be how though? Do I do that? Could it, okay, so let's stay there, right? Could, what if I hashtag on my phone, black doctors or black therapists? That's true. Right, you get what I'm saying? But that's I, true, because that's what I did when I, when I went to therapy. Um, I was the care um, giver for my mom. And right. my doctor was like, listen, like, how do you expect to take care of your mom when you're not even like yourself? Right, right. Um, she gave me like a list of therapists, but it was just like Caucasian woman, older right. white man. I'm like, yeah, they're not going to understand. So I took the time to research a black woman, a black therapist, African American therapist in Rhode Island. And I found some and I found the right one and I've been with her for two years. Well look, so now I mean I mean that I mean that's a that's that's exactly what I'm speaking mm -hmm. to. But I think I think I think I think you're right. I think the resources are not there mm -hmm. um it, it, when you talk about like nearsightedness right like in proximity it might not be there but i think the technology has provided us especially now and wow. when I specifically i think we are seeing now the advent of like virtual reality like it's really happening in real time like now we know that like companies can really thrive working from home people can virtually engage one another and so sure. I think we can now point to evidence like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I could, I could hashtag and I can connect with somebody, you know, virtual therapy is now booming more than ever because that's of true. what's going on. So, but to your point, I think there has to be a sort of impetus. There has to be a, 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 a light within, you know what I mean? Like, so in other words, you took it upon yourself to, to, to do the research, right? But mm. we need to get to a point where that's normalized because I don't know if everyone has the same uh, eagerness that you had, right? So, some people might've just stopped and, and, and would've been like, all right, I can't find no black person. I'm gonna just go with this white person and that's that it. You know what I'm saying? But I think there's something to be said about what is it gonna take for us to not just stop when you know, we're, we're not either denied or the, the, the resources aren't there. Like, we need to, like, normalize, like, okay, all right, there's nobody right here, but let me look at my phone. Let me go to Google. Let me, you know what I mean? And I think that's, that's powerful because that's something that we didn't have 20, you know, 10, you know, 20, 15, 20 years ago, you know? So I think we need to really take full advantage of that. You know what I mean? There's people right now that are killing it in so many different ways just by by home, you know, by sitting, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I think, you know, we can we can amass those resources in a way um that 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 there's just no there's no there there aren't any barriers, you know. Jess. I agree. <laughs> Yeah, yo, we went over the hour. Yo, this has been dope. Um, <laughs> yo, man, you got any last words? How can how can the people get in touch with you? How can you know what I mean? Like, talk to me. Um, well, you can follow me at J Marty. Word. Um, J M A R D I. Um, I my self love my self love blog is Beauty of Soul. Mm -hmm. um, and also you can follow Master Your Glow and be on the lookout for more um, more contact with us just just be on the lookout for future projects with me So, but thank you for having me on your podcast as well, you know, I'm kind of nervous and a little shy, but this was really fun man, this is dope, man we <laughs> some, yo, man, we chopped it up, man we, we, went, we went everywhere, you know what I mean um and I like like I said one more time, man. Thank you so much, and definitely want to have you back. And um, yeah, you know, that's it. We yeah. out. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna holler at you. All right, bye. Peace.